up you two, welcome back to Bike Hub. How are you doing out there in the world? My Aussie fans, how's it going over? How's it going on in the summer there? Is it nice and warm now? Surprisingly, this is the English winter and it's not particularly cold. It was 15 degrees a minute ago, which for October, I think is pretty bloody rare. So I'm enjoying the sunshine on my motorcycle. Anyhow, today's video, well, it's going to be a bit of a rant. Now, looking back a couple of years ago, do you guys remember I did a video when the whole Ukraine situation kicked off? Pretty much a couple of weeks after it kicked off, I did a video and I told everyone, hey, do your own research. Don't believe the bloody news because the mainstream media are full of liars and it's propaganda and oh, it'll make you go crazy if you believe it. Uh, you probably remember that video. It actually went down quite well. I was thinking at the time when I uploaded it, oh God, I don't want to talk about politics. I probably shot myself in the foot here. But actually, it was received quite well. Got lots of feedback, lots of comments. Not tons of views, but lots of comments, more than usual. So that's good. I'm glad that um, we had a bit of a, a conversation about that. And to be honest, I, I was really surprised at how many of you guys out there are quite open-minded shall we say and you're not not you know necessarily happy to uh trust what the news tells you so that's great but uh yeah so today my rant is going to be about israel and gaza and hamas and mossad and the idea of you know all those things so the reason that i've got myself in a bit of a mood a bit of a strop was because I reckon three months ago on Twitter, I posted a picture of a, a guy, a Hamas guy, wearing all his, his garb and an IDF soldier. And I wrote underneath, which one is the terrorist? Now, nobody replied to it. Nobody commented on it. Nobody liked it. And it just, you know, it was just a forgotten post from Twitter that just never, never was got any interaction. Then this morning, I opened up my Twitter and people who I generally just talk to about bikes and stuff were all commenting about Israel. And I thought, well, that's weird. How come they didn't comment when I put that picture up? So everyone now is a, an expert. Armchair experts. Where is that armchair detective? Whatever. So everyone's got a, uh, something to say about it now. And I wonder if they actually have a clue about what they're saying or are they just quoting the newspapers? I believe it is the latter. They're just saying what they've heard on the news, which isn't good. You just become a mouthpiece for the media, don't you? So basically, I just wanted to give you my, my version, give you some of the insights that I have, because I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to geopolitics. I spend a lot of time reading articles, I spend a lot of time listening to podcasts about, you know, news, world, world events and stuff. So compared to your layman, the layman, I've got, you know, a bit of a, bit of a, bit of knowledge, let's say, more than your average, average Joe. So first thing I want to say is um, Hamas, this Hamas, which we all know of now, probably a lot of people hadn't heard of them a few months ago, but now we all know about it. How did they come about? Was it just an organic thing? Did it just, you know, did it just come about because because they felt done to uh, badly done by Israel? Is that what happened? Do you think, or was it created by Israel? <clears throat> well, I believe it was created by Israel. Now, when I say I believe, I'm not going to say it's a fact, but you can. Uh, find a lot of information about it if you want to. Um, now, when the PLO was a big deal in the uh, in the world, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, I can't remember what it stands for, but when Yasser Arafat was in the news and the PLO was all over the news, they were a big, a thorn in the side of Israel. And they didn't want to go out there themselves and destroy the PLO. So they paid Hamas to do it. So at one point, Hamas was funded by Israel. Now, isn't it funny, you know, when you support these so-called terrorist groups, ever so often they come back and they bite you in the ass. You know, what's that saying? You shouldn't 
bite the hand that feeds you well they, they tend to so it's pretty obvious that Israel supported them financially gave them weapons gave them training and injured Hamas fighters who were against the PLO were treated at hospitals in Israel now you don't have to take my word for that there's plenty of um, plenty of articles you can read plenty of evidence for that so if you want to go ahead and read that awesome now can you think of any other terrorist organizations that might not have just organically been created were they engineered well let's look at isis who knows what isis was called before they were called isis hands up timmy at the back of the room there that's it what's the answer it's the mujahideen yes correct the mujahideen so when russia had invaded afghanistan all those years ago who was it that fought them off it was the mujahideen and who supported the mujahideen the west yes we sent them money we sent them munitions we gave them training we helped them with their planning so eventually the mujahideen becomes isis and again it bites the hand that feeds so it's not really a surprise is it we have been supporting so-called terrorist organizations for centuries and we call them terrorists when it suits them when it suits us sorry and then when it doesn't suit us we call them uh what do you call it freedom fighters or something like that you know fighting against the oppression of the evil russia it's always the evil russia isn't it i wonder why everyone seems to have forgotten that they were on our side during the second world war and they lost about 20 million people fighting the germans the germans yeah we've forgotten about that they're evil now putin is a evil mastermind like the guy in james bond that strokes the cat the firing power inside my crater is enough to annihilate a small army you can watch it all on tv that's basically what everyone thinks now isn't it and well i don't but it seems to be the popular thing to uh, bash president putin it pisses me off as well that they don't call him president putin or or his first name they just call him putin it's sort of disrespectful isn't it they call president biden president biden even though he's a fucking disgrace and should be in a bloody old people's home but uh, yeah anyway back back to the subject i sort of wandered off a bit there so I've told you a little bit of what I believe is how um, Hamas was created, how ISIS was created. Um, now let's get back to what actually happened that that Saturday. Was it a Saturday? I think it was a Saturday. So all of a sudden, these Hamas guys cross the border and just start raping, pillaging, killing people, kidnapping people. You name it. I'm not on their side. I'm also not on Israel's side. I'm neutral like switzerland but uh yeah they did some pretty horrendous stuff um but you know hamas uh, sorry mossad the intelligence service of israel is one of the best in the world they have got i mean pretty much every phone in that area is has got software on it there by mossad that lets lets them know exactly what you're doing they can read your messages they can read your calls they can find your gps they they're they're I, I wouldn't like to give them props because i don't think intelligence services that spy on their own people are good but i mean they are they are pretty damn good at what they do even though it's pretty bad but they're fucking good at it now are you telling me that this intelligence service which i reckon is probably the best in the world if not in the top three they didn't know that this was coming are you honestly telling me that i mean do, do you guys actually believe that they just this was just a, a surprise attack and that nobody knew anything about it i call bs on that i cannot believe that for one minute there was a lady on the news who was a um an idf soldier back in the day and she had a quote where she said uh if a rabbit moves within a mile of the border we know about it if a person moves within a couple of miles of the border we know about it and then she goes on to finish it saying if a cockroach came anywhere near the border we would know about it so they knew they knew and they let it happen in my opinion now why would they want it to happen that's you know a good question i think the answer to that is <coughs> 
cough. No, that's not the answer. The answer is they want a wider war. They, they, the is Israelis, or Israel as a state, should we say? I, I, I've got nothing against the, you know, normal citizens. Obviously, it's not those sort of people. It's not the, the common man that I hate. It's the the bastards in charge. Now, they hate Iran with a passion, and they would pretty much do anything to have a legitimate war with Iran and they've tried all sorts of things but it's never quite worked but I see this situation as being um, a way for them to have a legitimate war with Iran so I think what's going to happen is they're going to say that all these missiles all these weapons came from Iran that Iran was funding and helping Hamas and so now we we need to go and fight Iran that's what I think is uh, the goal for this now I think we're very close to World War III now. We're on the precipice, to use the words that the media loves to use. Uh, and I think it's it's not just going to be Iran either, it's going to be Syria. Poor old Assad in Syria, he's going to get it again. Uh, it'll probably be Egypt as well. Um, and, you know, Israel is basically going to grab all that land from, uh, you know, the Palestinians, Lebanese, people in Gaza. I mean, they, they're all they're doomed to to some extent um and that's why I, I think the reason for this is it's it's to start a wider war in the middle east as a whole and it's basically going to cause world war three because we're already the brits have already sent navy um a navy group there uh u.s marines are on the way if not they've probably arrived already it it's it's a typical it's just I mean, it's bonkers, really, isn't it? It's mad that this is this is happening, but that's that's the reason that I think it's going on is because uh, Israel and the West need a bigger, wider war so they can line their pockets with more billions of pounds and dollars that they, uh, you know, they make from from murdering people. Um, yeah, I've, I've kind of gone off on a bit of a rant here, haven't I? Uh, let's say, let's say, obviously don't, don't believe me, don't take everything that I say as gospel, do your own research, do your own fact checking, and you'll probably come to the same conclusions as me, I think. I'm lost, I don't know where I am. Oh yes I do. Yeah, you'll hopefully come to the same conclusion as me, that this is a, uh, it's a stepping stone into uh what are nefarious nefarious plans so be good out there everyone don't be an evil bastard like the powers that be that run the world be good to each other love your fellow man make love not war man etc all right guys i've rambled on long enough i'll see you when i see you bye bye